Have Democrats given up on men? We saw this story uh, yesterday when we were talking about how the political parties are basically breaking down between women and men. If you look at the United States and how women vote, overwhelmingly Democrat. If only women voted in this country, blue. If only men voted in this country, 95% red. Unfortunately, you got a, a lot of simps out there. But this is an interesting article. In a recent interview with the New York Times columnist Maureen Dowd, Democratic tactician James Carville lamented his party's refusal to appeal to male voters, saying, if you listen to Democratic elites, NPR is my go to place for that. The whole talk is about how women and women of color are going to decide this election. I'm like, well, 40 percent of the people that vote are males. Do you mind if they have some consideration? I saw this story. and I thought it was funny because you got this video from uh, Harry Sisson. You, you know him, you love him. For those that aren't familiar, Harry Sisson is this like prominent pro Biden uh, 20. Well, how old is he? 21, 21 year old Democrat who <laughs> doesn't have Google. But uh, that's one way to describe how he's got no idea what's going on. But I'm going to play a little bit of his video for you and then we'll explain. Democrats don't care about men. Let me play this video for you. It's always crazy to me when I see like straight white guys between the ages of 18 and 29, like myself, supporting Donald Trump, because like, do you guys not realize how bad a Trump victory would be for you? Does that uh, not click? OK, uh, let's let's hear why that may be the case. Like if you have a woman in your life, a girlfriend, a mother, a sister, Donald Trump is running on taking their reproductive rights away. Re oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's pause right there. How does that affect men? Let's uh, let's let's talk about why so many young men are flocking to, say, Andrew Tate, top G. Harry, you really got to talk to people, man, because one of the big issues as to why men support Republicans in this matter is uh, let me see if I can find this video. I probably can't uh, as woman enters. So there's a video. Let me see if I can find this video is a horrifying video. Now, nah, I'm not gonna be able to find it. It might, might be on X. Let me see. So, uh, all right, all right. Bear with me. Bear with me. It's not. It's not. I. I. I don't. I don't have this one to pull up. But uh, there's a video where a guy is following a woman into an abortion clinic. Like she's walking up to an abortion clinic, and he's crying his eyes out, screaming, "Please don't kill my baby!" And then he drops to his knees as she shakes him off and walks inside to terminate his son. And he has no say. I was talking to a young man who's about 25, 26, and he said he flipped Democrat Republican 100 <clears> percent. <throat> one issue. He said that he was in a relationship with a girl and she got pregnant and he was excited and she got an abortion and he was devastated. He had no control over the matter. He was really he thought he was going to be a dad and she decided it's her choice and she terminated the baby. And he was like, that's it for me. And I was like, that one issue is like, that's all that matters. He, I, I'm like, man. That must have ripped his soul out of his body. Like, you're a dude. You're so excited. You're with this woman. You really you really love her. You care about her. You're going to be a dad. And then she says, I don't care about you. I'm getting an abortion. And you can do nothing. There you go. I'm not saying what's right or wrong. I'm just saying, guys, from that, they ain't agreeing with you, Harry. Now, you might find liberal guys who are like, I don't want no kids. Get the abortion. But not every guy feels that way. More to the point. For for most guys, they don't care at all. It's it's it, you, you're you're saying you're a white guy and you're and you're gonna vote for Trump. Did you know that Trump is gonna deport non citizens from Central America? And you're like, what does that have to do with me? Let's let's play more though. Republicans in the Senate just voted against a bill that would protect their access to contraception the other day. Why would a guy care about that, dude? What? Or maybe you work in a factory and you think that Donald Trump's going to protect your job. Sorry, no. Donald Trump outsourced more jobs than Obama. And right now there's a manufacturing boom because of President Biden. Don't believe me? Look it up for yourself. All right, let's look it up. Uh, this may be true. You know, uh, Trump outsourced more than Obama. The offshoring of U.S. jobs increased on Trump's watch, according to Bloomberg. Trump's manufacturing record sinks, newest data shows, how offshoring rolled along under Trump. So uh, let's 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 see if we can pull these numbers up. I'll pull it up. <clears throat> Trade adjustment. What's uh, what does Bloomberg say? President Trump's greatest economic premise in the 2016 election was to stop the offshoring of American jobs as it worked. 
That's not an easy question. That's not an easy question to answer. Companies tend not to loudly. Oh, so it's not particularly definitive. We don't really know. And the issue may not actually be Donald Trump. So Trump didn't outsource more jobs. It's just that jobs were getting outsourced under Trump. Okay, well, let me try something else then. Let me try um, auto manufacturers return to Michigan under Trump. I remember this one was it was a big story. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's it's giving me all this not like I want the news stories. Uh, let's see. Let, let me do this one. Three billion invested Michigan auto. Uh, oh, wow. Here we go. Let's see. What we got um, this one's tough to pull up. It is. So let me see. We got to do a search by time. Oh, you know, let's do this. Let's add Trump to that. Yeah, this one's hard to pull up, too. I'm going to I'm willing to give uh, Harris isn't anything, you know, he wants if he's right about it. But um, man, I'll just pull this up so you can actually see it. I mean, cause I, I, I pull him up the other side. Uh, it's 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 all of this stuff is is always just like insulting Trump. As Trump flaunts Ford's one point two billion investment for it as it was planned in 2015. Like this, this, this is my point about he's saying Trump outsourced more jobs. If something happened under Trump, but something happened before, like was planned before Trump, that's not the issue I'm concerned about. What I'm concerned about is, is Donald Trump going to, I don't know, shut down TPP? Let's, let's, let's pull up, uh, let's pull up TPP wiki. Trans-Pacific Partnership. Oh, it's a proposed trade agreement between 12 Pacific Rim economies, Australia, Brunei, Canada, Chile, Japan, Malaysia, Mexico, New Zealand, Peru, Singapore, Vietnam, and the U.S. Blah, blah, blah. Became an, as an expansion. And uh, it, it was uh, uh, the remaining countries. OK, so here we go. Donald Trump formally withdrew from the TPP in 2017, therefore ensuring it could not be ratified. So that's another big issue. I really do want to find this story. I was hoping to find it much, much more quickly. Uh, tariffs on autos. Michael Moore had. Uh, oh, man. Wow. Really? Here's one for you. This one's for Harry. What Trump's 100 percent auto tariff would mean for the U.S. economy. Whatever you think about it, good or bad, this is what regular working people are talking about. Donald Trump saying, you make a car out of the country, we will bring a tariff. So um, I think it was Ford. It's hard to remember. It's been it's been like six years, you know, mind you. Was it Ohio, actually? I think it might have been Ohio. Oh, is this it? Did I just find it? It's just been so long. Uh, Ford investing 3.7 billion in Michigan, Ohio, and Missouri plants. That's absolutely fantastic. And, uh, Ford to lead America's shift to EVs. That's the 3.7 billion right there. That's an, an EV shift. It is hard to pull up sources from during the Trump administration, considering it, it, it was, it was so long ago, but, um, without, without going too deep and wasting too much time for this one, I'll just say on the basis when he says Trump outsourced more jobs than Obama, I think it is fair to say there is reason to believe that more jobs were uh, were outsourced during Trump than Trump would have liked. And I think it's fair to say that things happen during presidencies. And I think it's fair to say, too, that like inflation and gas prices and these things are not the fault necessarily of Joe Biden either. The pandemic played a huge role in driving up costs uh, under Donald Trump. We were mass spending and uh, borrowing against our future, which is going to have a negative impact. However, I can still make those arguments, but uh, I'll, no, no problem to say, Harry, sure, sure. The point is this, however, under Joe Biden, you have Demo Well, I will say this. Joe Biden has adopted a lot of Trump's policies under Joe Biden. Right now, you have spending problems. We did see this under Trump as well. You've got war problems. We did not see that under Trump in the same way. Donald Trump did better at not wasting our money overseas. And a driver of inflation, of course, is mass foreign spending. The more war and conflict they have, the worse it's going to be. Joe Biden has a border crisis, which is also resulting in people in major cities being extremely upset that the commons are being seized by non-citizens. But uh, I, I want to be as fair as possible to Harry because I, I really want to entertain what he's saying. And, uh, uh, you know, if it's true, it's true.
yourself. Or maybe you're just like, yeah, I hate the inflation and the gas prices, so I like Trump. Well, I hate to break it to you because contrary to what Donald Trump tells you, Joe Biden is not responsible for the inflation or the high gas prices. That happened all mm -hmm. around the world as a result of the pandemic. And actually right now, we're drilling more oil than ever before and inflation has fallen rapidly. And many economists are saying that Donald Trump's policies are far more inflationary and could make the situation worse. So that, that last bit is conjecture that's meaningless. I can, uh, let's, let's do this. Biden Keystone. This one I can, uh, uh, here we go. I don't know. I'll just pull up Steve Daines, U.S. Senator. Biden administration report admits canceling key XL pipeline killed thousands of jobs and cost of billions. January 5th, 2023. Like my friend, Harry, come down. Let's have a conversation about Joe Biden. I will pull up all the sources. You say that Trump outsourced more jobs. Okay, I'll pull that up. My big thing's foreign policy, of course, but let's talk about gas prices. Inflation, I actually agree with to a certain extent. A large component of inflation is Donald Trump policies during the pandemic, but not just his, but basically the entire country's because Trump ain't no saint. He's certainly better than Joe Biden, though. But let's talk about gas prices. Joe Biden cancels the Keystone Pipeline almost right away. What does that do? The Keystone Pipeline is going to be transporting oil from Canada through the United States. And I believe I, I could be wrong where it ended. I think it may have ended it in the, um, near like Corpus Christi or something. Why does canceling that and banning fracking on federal lands result in higher gas prices? It's actually quite simple. And you can complain about this because I don't think we completely disagree. When Joe Biden cancels the pipeline, projected delivery of goods goes down. So what you have are uh, people in the market are saying right now we need let's just do rudimentary numbers. We need 10 barrels of oil every day. But at a 3 percent growth rate, we are going to need by next year. We're going to need 10.3. We're going to need, uh, you know, 15. If we want to see growth, we need more fuels. OK, so 10 barrels are coming in. We're using all 10 and we're going to see a 3.7 percent economic growth. We're going to need energy to accommodate that. I'm being very rudimentary and oversimplifying. Joe Biden then comes in and says, shut down Keystone XL. What happens? The people in the market who are predicting how much oil we need say, guys, guys, we were projecting delivery of up to 10.5 barrels. But with the shuttering of Keystone in the next five years, we are going to be at 10.1, meaning there will not be enough oil fossil fuels to accommodate the expanding market. So what happens? People start buying up immediately contracts and rights on oil futures. The price skyrockets. Back when I worked at, um, uh, this was in the 2000s, there was a major oil spike. Barrels went up to an absurd degree. Gas was really high. Everybody was furious. Southwest Airlines, they were loving it. I worked for uh, American Eagle Airlines at O'Hare and they were like, everyone's hurting because the cost of gas has become the fuel has become so high that it's, it's hard to make these flights profitable. So they really liked the regional airlines because those were good. Southwest was good. They cut a deal when when oil was at like 20 bucks a barrel. They said, we'll do thirty dollars a barrel for like 20 years or something. I don't remember the exact numbers. And the oil company was like, we're going to get a premium on oil. You're going to spend 30% more? Lock it in, baby. And then a few years later, oil went up to like 70, 80 bucks, and Southwest was locked in at 30. And so they were swimming in it. Let's play a little, the last little bit. Point is, there's nothing manly or cool about voting for Donald Trump. What's actually honorable is standing up for people whose voices may not be as loud as yours. Food for thought. And there it is, the final hammer. And it, like, this is the only thing Democrats have. They've abandoned men. They offer men nothing. You got to offer guys something, dude. You can't say they're going to take away the, the, the birth control from your sister. And it's just the guy's going to be like, I, I, I don't I don't know. I, I don't even know what how birth control works. Honestly, I got to be honest. I don't understand. Like, I know the general components of birth control from reading news and, and things like that. But like, <coughs> I don't know how often they take them. Like it's once every day or something, I guess. And they have like, they have like a, a thing with like 28 or 31 days or something. I, I have no idea. Birth control pills. No idea how it works. Doesn't affect me. Don't care. Not a part of my life. So when you come to me and say that's a big issue, I just say, I don't know. I don't know. I can tell you this. 
Harry, my one little bit of advice for you is people will not remember what you told them. They will remember how you made them feel. And uh, it may be true that on the core things you've mentioned, you are you are right about Trump and the economy. I will just concede all of that to you. That's not what motivates me as a 38 year old guy. And I'm not, you know, 18 to 29 or whatever, like you're pointing out. But I can tell you when I do talk to younger guys, these things are not motivating factors. They're saying, I want a family. I want to own a house. I want to get a better job. And you're going, you should be standing up for people who aren't as loud as you. Good luck with that. The reality is the Democrats have abandoned young men and they're they're going to lose them. And this is why you made the video. Good luck. Good luck. I'd love to do a deeper dive on this stuff and have a real conversation on these economic policy issues and your views. So come on the show anytime. I'll leave it there. Next segment is coming up tonight at 8 p.m. over at YouTube.com slash Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you all then.